Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi-Hull Conversations with Jim Brown. In this segment, Jim speaks to famous multi-hull sailor and adventurer John Glenny. John is possibly most notable for surviving with his shipmates for 119 days aboard their overturned trimaran named Rose Noel in 1989. This was recorded in a documentary entitled Back from the Dead, The Saga of the Rose Noel. To find out more about this historic audio series, come visit us on the web at www.outrigmedia.com. Jim Brown here with another edition of our Conversations with Multi-Health Personalities, and tonight we have a chance to speak with my old friend John Glenny, who has had a considerable background of multi-hull seafaring. And I would, uh, hello, John, are you still there? Yes, I'm here, Jim. Good, okay, we're on a conference call, and uh, and I'm I'm trying to remember John, just when it was that you and I met, it must have been sometime in the late 60s, huh? It was, uh, uh, would be either 69 or 70 in, in uh, Marina del Rey. Ah, and that, and that was a time uh, at which uh, you and your brother arrived in Los Angeles from your trip through the Pacific Islands in, in your Piver-designed trimaran, the Lodestar, called uh, Highlight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We, oh, oh, we, we. Okay. So, so what we need to know is, is how you got there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I was um, I was heavily into cycling, and I had a bad crash, and um, while I was healing, I had to dream up a new dream because the specialist told me I wouldn't have the same kick in my in my legs for winning sprints and at the end of 100 mile races so my the dream that i came up with was um to go sailing through the islands and it's very difficult to just to um tell people you're going to build a boat and sail up the islands but then i had another idea because i was so into cycling and going to the games i thought well we're going to build a boat and, and sail to the games in tokyo and it, that, that seemed to please everybody. So we, I started work on a a, um, a 26 foot um, uh, monohull. And as I was drawing up the lines of that, I saw a photo of Piver's Lodestar in Hawaii, and that got me hooked. Um, I had to have one of those because I was a I was a really bad sailor, um, whether it was on the water or in a plane, or in a car. I only had to stand on a wharf watching a boat go up and down and get sick. But the the idea of sailing up to the islands was more powerful. So we built a boat, we sold our motorbikes, and we bought the plans, and we started off with no money at all. And we were wor- working on appre- um, on apprentices' wages. And uh, in a... That was you and your brother? Yes, my, yeah, my brother. He was a refrigeration mechanic. He was doing his trade at that, and I was doing my trade at boat building. And it took us a year and a half, and we launched the boat, and um, time was getting a bit short, and we sailed it, motored down the river, and then sailed it across Cook Strait and got into a, a lot, a lot of trouble. And uh, where we built the boat, there was no marine stores or you couldn't buy anything like that at all. So all the sheets and halyards on the boat were all um, clotheslined. And we had, no, we had no lifelines on the boat. We had nothing. There was no handrails. We even towed the dinghy because there was nowhere to put the dinghy on board. Wow. So uh, we, we got a big gale going across Cook Strait, which is quite a bad part where the, the winds funnel down between the North Island and South Island of New Zealand. 
and we blew the sail out. Um, and then we got towed in by a fishing boat, fortunately, and then on the way back, we had a good sail on the way back, uh, repaired the boat a bit and uh, left again. And within the first half hour, we hit a, a whale and that broke our rudder off. And it was quite a few hours before we realized, because it was at night time, that we had no rudder because the, you know, the rudder had broken down below the water line. And we were drifting up and we're drifting up and down the Cook Strait, and uh, we were just about to hit the hit the coast when a, a whale chaser came out and hauled us back in again. So we repaired boat again and we took off, and then we we le- uh, we learnt how to sail that way. We didn't know anything about sailing at all, none of, none whatsoever. I'd done my apprenticeship as, as, as on boats, and we'd been around boats a lot, but had no idea on on how to sail. The only thing I knew about sailing was I'd read a book once and it had these little illustrations of where to put the sails when the when the wind was coming from a certain direction. So the w- wind was coming side on then you have the sails half out and if you're going about 45 degrees the wind then you pull the sails right in. And then it had a, this little drawing of what the boat looked like when it was facing into the wind. And the sail was like a snake going out behind it, you know. And I thought, oh, how novel. Is that how you go to Windward? Well, I tried that when we were out, out in Cook Strait, and, and it, it didn't work. So anyone, so I can, I can um, it'll save anybody that trouble. So that's how much we knew about it. But we, that's how we learnt, and we learnt the hard way, and it's a good way to learn. So we um, then we sailed. Uh, we we sailed up to Norfolk Island and back again. And then then we wanted to go to Rapa. Rapa is way down, about 600 miles south of Tahiti. And there was an American woman who wrote a uh, an article. She was a journalist, and she'd been to Rapa, and she came back and wrote this wonderful story about how she went to Rapa. And the guys on Rapa are excellent sailors. And the old, old sailing ships that used to go there, they used to take them on as crew. And we met lots of guys who'd sail all around the world on ships. They'd been to, you know, everywhere. And, the, and this, this little village way, way, way down south, is, you know, not, not very many people. But because, because of that, the women outnumbered the men by six to one. And oh, that's that, why you wanted to go to Rapa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good, good guess. She must be psychic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and she said that the the women used to even feed the men at their meals. The men didn't have to do anything. You know, the women did all the work in the taro fields and that sort of thing. And we thought we would like we you know would being bull virgins we decided we would love to go to a stud farm you know that was our ideal so <laughs> how, how we old took, were you this time uh 23 yeah was, okay <laughs> yeah and we had no idea about women but and which is the reason why year? we built a boat to go sailing yeah, this, now. so this was this was in the mid 60s huh or yeah that was yeah when we left it was 64 ah yeah okay and in fact when we were when we were in Wellington and on the beach repairing the boat um, after Cook Strait, the Beatles arrived and went past in their Rolls Royce and we waved out to them. <laughs> because the, the, they were coming in from the airport. <laughs> but any, anyway, uh, we got hit by another whale and it, uh, it, it damaged the boat and water came in the, in the float and flooded that. So we decided to go up to Rarotonga, and uh, we took it up there and re- repaired it there. And that's that was our first Polynesian island. And we noticed that um, the the guys off the other yachts, when they started making friends with the the, the, the New Zealanders up there. Because we this, we came, I didn't tell you, did I? We came from New Zealand. Yes. Um, and uh, because they made friends with 
with them and the doctor and all that sort of thing, then the island girls wouldn't have anything to do with them because they probably thought that they were too above them to talk to them. So we we learnt that one. And uh, But when we were sailing, uh, the reason we go sailing is to is to meet people from other cultures and get to know their language and and laugh with them and work with them and and just you know and you sort of keep well away from the uh, from the other cruising yachts and you you don't have great big parties and that sort of thing and if you wanted to do that you might as well have stayed at home so I think things are a little different now and most of the people who who are cruising in those days. They they were pretty much like us. They were a lot of the farmers thought they'd like to go cruising, and and they would build a trimaran in their backyards, and they would take off and and cruise around or sail it or something like that. But I know when we arrived in Tahiti, there was all sorts of boats there, and they were some of barges and all sorts of things, and there was no prejudice at, at all. Um, everybody just thought it was great that they were off doing their thing and having a good time. Thanks for listening. To find out more about this historic multi-hall audio series, please visit us on the web at www.outrigmedia.com.